Hello, uh, today we'll be going over Code Forces round number 640, problem D, which is Alice, Bob, and Candies. So the problem statement is that there are n candies in a row, and they're numbered from left to right from 1 to n. The size of the ith candy is A of i. You are then given an array of candies. Let's have n equal to 11. So let's have our array B. So here we have n equal to 11, and each of the values in the array is A of i. So here we have two people, Alice and Bob. Alice starts on the left side, and she starts eating the candies from left to right. Bob starts on the right side and eats them from right to left. And the way the people eat the candies goes like this. Alice will first eat the Bob candy on move number one. So then we can write Alice sum, our a new integer, equal to three. And this is basically just the size of the candy. All these numbers in the array represent the sizes of candies. So you see it's a candy of size 3. Then Bob comes over on his side and eats his candy of size 5. So you can write the Bob sum equal to 5. Now we go back to Alice. She sees the first candy equal to 1. However, she wants to eat on her turn more than Bob ate on his turn. We see over here that Bob ate 5 candies. So we want her to eat six or more. So she first sees the one here, and then she sees a four. This is equal to five. However, she wants to eat more than five. So then she sees a one here, and then she stops. As soon as she gets to a number that is greater than the amount Bob ate, she will stop. So she's eaten one plus four plus one, which equal to six candies. And this is move three. This here was move two. Now we move on to Bob's side of things. So now Bob wants to eat candies of size more than 6. So you see, first sees the 3. 3 is less than 6. So he goes to the next one, which is the 5. And 3 plus 5 equals 8. This is move number 4. If we keep going on, we'll see that Alice will end up eating the 5 and the 9 over here. Which becomes move 5. But since there are only two candies left, we will eat whatever is left over. So this becomes move six, and Bob sum equals eight in this case. So summing these up, we get Alice sum equals three plus six plus 14, which is 23. Bob sum becomes five plus eight plus eight, which becomes 21. And the number of moves we see goes all the way up to here of six. So there are six moves. So this is what we want to print out. Now let's move on to how we're going to code the solution. So we start out with our integer t, which is the number of test cases, and we can print into it. Then we can create a for loop for each test case. From here, we have our integer n, which is the size of the array, which we'll have. We can input into n, and then we can create a vector of candies. And the reason why we have a vector is because after we eat each candy, we are going to remove it from the vector. So we do not count it over again. Now after this, we are going to input into the vector. After we have pushed into the vector, we can start our actual function here. So we'll have a few variables, int alice sum equal to zero. What alice sum represents is the total amount of candies, or the sum of the candies, which alice ate. Bob sum equal to zero, which should also be the total. We're going to print both of these values out. Moves, which would be the amount of moves it required. Alice temp and Bob temp. Alice temp and Bob temp, they just represent the size of the candies which they ate on that specific turn. And we will use these two values to compare how many candies we should eat. So the entire loop goes inside one while loop, which is while candies is not empty. So while there are still candies, we want to keep on eating. So if Alice temp is less than or equal to Bob temp, we want to make Alice eat because she starts off first. So if she she hasn't ate enough, we're going to create a while loop 
we want to make sure that there are candies inside the array. So while we still have candies in the array, we want to continuously eat. As we eat, we want to erase the candies from the beginning of the array because we've already eaten them. From here, while we're in the for loop, we have no break statement, so it'll keep eating until the candies are empty. However, we want to stop when Alice temp becomes greater than Bob temp, because then we know that it is Bob's turn to eat now. At the end of this, we know that we want to increment our moves counter by 1, and then we can set Bob temp equal to 0. This is so that on Bob's turn, he starts out at zero candies eaten. So you want to set his equal to zero. And then we're going to continuously increment it by the amount of candies to pass Alice's sum on his turn. So what we can do is we can essentially copy and paste this out. And from here, we can just change our values. If Bob temp is us an Alice temp, now we know it's Bob's turn. While well, candies are not empty, Bob sum and Bob temp. And then here we are going to erase the last candy. So a simple way to do this is we can do pop back. And then if Bob temp becomes greater than Alice temp, we can break. So this is how we can solve this problem. And then we can add two moves. One thing we should need to keep in mind is that after doing all of this, we still need to check if candies becomes empty here. See, if candies is empty, then we can break out of this entire while loop. Here, we only break out of this while loop, but we're still stuck in this. So in order to break out of the bigger while loop, we need to check if it is empty be in between, and then we can break. But before we break, we want to print out our values. So we can place this before and after all of our statements. And now at the end, at the end we can have our general return zero statement. And after we print everything out, after we've gone through the entire while loop over here, we want to set moves equal to zero. One more thing which we need to keep in mind is over here after we have Bob eat his candies, we want to set Alice temp equal to zero. So that way, Alice temp is zero when it comes up here. So then we can easily calculate Alice's moves because Bob temp will still be saved, but Alice temp will be set to zero. And once you submit it, you will see that it is accepted.